Anna. Before the fair ended, Danielle started feeling shaky. She was out of juice in her kit, so I went with her to the nurse. It made me nervous whenever she got like that, especially when she didn't have sugar to treat herself with right away. But I was still nothing like Nurse Sharon. When we showed up unexpectedly and told her the situation, she got all frazzled. Danielle and I remained calm. We knew the drill. Danielle sat down while I got her some juice. She drank it, and then we waited. After having a low blood sugar reading, Danielle was supposed to treat herself and then wait until her symptoms went away. If her symptoms persisted, then she would need to do another finger stick to recheck and continue to treat herself. The waiting was torture for Nurse Sharon. She had some crazy fear that the juice wasn't going to work one of these times. Not surprisingly, her jitters spread to her mouth and she got going a mile a minute with who else but Mrs. Rollins. Did you go to that fair today? Nurse Sharon asked Mrs. Rollins. Yes, I sure did. Wasn't it something? Nurse Sharon said. There was so much to see. Origami, animals, knitting, wood burning, Legos. It's a shame, Mrs. Rollins said. Those poor kids really put their hearts and souls into it. And that Mr. Terrup seems like a wonderful man, but if push comes to shove, he'll still be one of the first people on the chopping block. I'm not sure if Danielle's symptoms were gone, but she was right behind me, running down the hall. We rushed into the gym and found the gang as fast as we could. Luke was right, I said, fighting to catch my breath. We just overheard Mrs. Rollins talking. She said if push comes to shove, Mr. Terrapt will be one of the first people to go. What does that mean? Peter asked. It means what we feared could be true is true, Luke said. This fair hasn't changed anything. If the budget fails, Mr. Terrapt is out. It's time for another campaign. Saving Mr. Terrapt.